You can pause the experience at any point and review previous and current objectives. Check it out now, and then return to the game. A lot of time will be spent operating trains, so when ready, sit in the engineer's seat. A heads-up display has appeared on the right side of the screen. This is a guide to what the train is doing. This is the speed display. The white needle shows current speed. The red marker indicates the maximum permitted speed. This is the direction display. An arrow will indicate forward, reverse, and neutral directions. This is the power display. A number will indicate what position the power control is in. These are brake indicators. They show the state of the various brake systems, allowing independent management of them. In the top right are the signal and speed limit displays. These feature an indication of what is approaching and a countdown distance to when they will come into effect. Some of these displays can be hidden via the settings menu for a more challenging experience. This train is ready to go. Sandpatch Grade offers the ability to operate powerful and heavy freight trains on one of America's most stunning and famous railroads. You are currently riding an AC 4400 CW locomotive. These are the workhorses of trains operating over the Sandpatch Grade, with CSX Transportation having more than 600 in its roster. Train Sim World allows you to run. Other internal and external camera views are available to be explored. These can be accessed from the number keys. You've only explored a small area here, so let's take a look at what else there is to enjoy. Welcome to Pennsylvania. Crossing the Allegheny Mountains, the Sandpatch Grade is a vital link in the sprawling CSX rail system. Master the controls of powerful American freight locomotives operating out of the vast Cumberland Yard facility. Whether the sun is shining, there's a rain shower, or a full-on snow blizzard, it's up to you to keep the rail traffic moving. Battle your way over one of the steepest railroad grades on the East Coast. Along the way, don't forget to place safety posters, collect lost hard hats, put up no trespassing signage, and fix broken snow markers. Welcome to the Sandpatch Grade.
This is the latest generation general purpose type 38 locomotive built by the Electromotive Division of General Motors. Known as a GP38-2, it packs an efficient 16-cylinder diesel electric motor able to generate 2,000 horsepower. First off, walk over to the locomotive as indicated. Open the cab door and proceed inside. To take Safety always comes first on the railroad. So to start with, we need to let those around us know this locomotive is operational. Begin by turning the forward headlights control to bright. There are three key controls to operating this locomotive. To the left is the auto brake which applies brakes along the entire length of the train. Let's move this to release. We're about to move, so make two blasts of the horn to alert anyone around. Remember, safety first. Now add some power, but not too much. Too much power too soon can damage both the locomotive and the cars. Always start off nice and slowly. You're moving! Great work! To maintain a constant speed, move the throttle back to its idle position. That concludes the basic engineer training on this locomotive. So, let's bring it to a stop. Move the auto brake to initial reduction. Add That was great work. You've just completed your first lesson operating the GP38-2. There's always more that can be discovered though. As engineers, we'll never stop honing our skill.
So you want to learn about yard switching? Let's take a look. Before a train goes anywhere, crews arrange all the cars together. Meticulous planning goes into making sure the right cars go to the right tracks to make up the right trains. This process is called switching. Climb aboard this locomotive and we'll get started. Set the locomotive up and pull towards the cars ahead. Take it easy though. Five miles an hour will do. Gently bump into the cars up ahead. The couplers will engage automatically. That's it. You got this. Now, haul them back beyond the switch in the track.
these cars with the others on the adjacent track, a switch in the track must be changed. Climb down from the locomotive and walk to the switch. Excellent. We're all set. Climb back aboard and push the cars down the track, connecting them with the others already there.
You're doing great. Keep it up. Now to uncouple the locomotive from the cars, climb down and walk to the first freight car. Pull the cut lever to disconnect the locomotive from the cars. That's all there is to it. This process is repeated until all the cars required are assembled on the same track. To finish, climb back aboard the locomotive and move it up the track so it is ready to assemble more cars.
Refueling is an important part of keeping a locomotive running, so let's go over how we do it. A refueling stand consists of two components. The hose, which connects to the locomotive, Return to the fuel stand and activate the refueling pump. The system will automatically switch off once the tank is full. You can see the state of refueling by observing the indicator on the side of the fuel tank. Pick up the hose and put it back on the fuel stand, then replace them. Thank you. 
Thank you. 